It's a shame he wasn't more headstrong. So when it comes to video game adaptations of movies or TV shows or books or candy or pencils or Jackie Chan or theme parks or eggs, most of the time they were completed just for the sake of capitalizing on a popular thing it's adapting, so the quality goes out the window. And when looking at something like the 2011 movie-based game Real Steel, you'd assume the same. And why not? With a Metacritic score of 41, it's neighboring some games like Way of the Dog, a Snoop Dogg video game adaptation which proves that anything can get a game adaptation. As if the aforementioned pencil and egg games didn't make that obvious enough already. <laughs> Well, Real Steel is delisted, so once again we have to go use our handy dandy PS3 emulator to run it. So when you see these little visual glitches, it's not the actual game and I don't know how to fix this. I mean, what do I look like? A statistician? Real Steel was made by Ukes. I'm sure most of you guys recognize them from the WWE games or the UFC games or maybe even Eve of Extinction? No? Just me? Okay. Give me a break. And this is apparent. Not even because of the gameplay, to hell with all that shit. It's these menus. Peak SmackDown vs. Raw vibes right here. Even look at the KO graphic. Looks just like the ones from the PS2 era SmackDown games. Well, Real Steel the video game is based on the movie, but only in concept, basically. There's no plot or Hugh Jackman, which some may consider a good thing. Like, come on, man, did he bang your wife or something? It's just the boxing gameplay. You have your light strikes, your heavy strikes, body blows, and special strikes, which can lead to these combos. Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! For the defensive side of things, you can block high and block low, but doing so sacrifices your long-term future for your short-term future. You see, you take limb damage throughout the fight. The more you take, you run the risk of losing that limb. You could still fight with one arm, but obviously it makes things way harder. So in order to avoid limb damage, it's best to just evade strikes or weave out of the way. Now, once you lose two arms, the fight is over, which is bullshit because humans can keep fighting with no arms. So why can't these robots or the fight ends if you lose your head? Not a good time to lose one's head. Which is fair, because I have yet to see a human compete with no head. Yet. Between rounds, you could choose to heal one injured limb, or go for an attack power upgrade. This gameplay formula works. I'm a fan of games that give you multiple ways to win, with each one of them coming with their own inherent risk. Like, if I've already been knocked down twice and my opponent has an orange head at this point, maybe I go for taking that head off as opposed to going for knockdowns. Maybe I buy attack power in between rounds instead of healing in order to close the power gap. Even evading strikes isn't safe because you have an energy meter and once that energy meter runs out, you're wide open for attack. A lot of this works, but there are some annoying things. The hit detection is pretty solid. I like the way how certain blows are glancing. The problem with this is that swaying is almost completely worthless. No matter which way you move, you always get clipped no matter what. Even shots that look like they should have been evaded still hit you. The only thing that I see get swayed out of the way are jabs and hooks that are ducked under. You have to rely on the evade as far as avoiding strikes goes, which works. I just wish there was a more reliable way to avoid strikes besides a Grand Canyon sized leap. The knockdown minigame is pretty unique. There are four levels to fill up and you do this by moving the left analog stick around for these circles to fill up. Then press one of the face buttons to fill up the meters. It's unique, but I hate these stick spinning minigames. I thought Mario Party taught us that these things suck. As far as game modes go, there's only one besides the standard versus mode. It's called the match mode where you climb up the rankings from the underground to the main stage. Before all that, you create your own robot because what would a Yuke's game be without creation, right? You can pick from a multitude of parts and customize each part with different colors or textures. Like it even has a gloss meter. Damn, that's drier than California. My eyes! 
Unfortunately, I can't change my robot's color or make him shiny because the designer was part of a DLC pack. And I don't know how to get this to work, man. I've tried. So I have to be generic gray, man. After your first fight or so, you run into a pretty big roadblock, and this may or may not break the game for you, personally. Why the fuck do my dog walk sideways, boy? You get annihilated by the third guy simply because his stats are better than yours. He does more damage than a Flexio commercial, and he has super armor, which means he can take shots uninterrupted. Each robot on here has a battle rating next to them, and you have to improve your battle rating. How do you do that? With money, of course. You could buy certain things like arms, legs, fists, and other things like motherboards and fluid to create your own crazy robo amalgamation. In theory, there's no problem with this, but I wish there was a way to upgrade specific parts because most of the time you are just going to go with the part that makes you better overall, as opposed to what actually looks good and what you want to see on your robot. I had to eventually create this Johnny Bravo looking dude with his gigantic top half and small lower half because that was the best combination of parts. After you run into a couple more guys, you run into another issue regarding progression. You see, there are only certain parts that can be bought if you meet level requirements for some stats. How you play determines what gets leveled up. So for instance, the categories to level up are offense, which is self-explanatory, guard, which is blocking, speed, where you evade strikes, Performance is getting knockdowns and winning, but you mostly get this through taunting and destruction, which you get from destroying your opponent's limbs. You'll never be the head of a major corporation. Some of this is fine. Naturally, you level up offense and guard because you'll naturally be punching and blocking. I can't say the same for others, though. So I end up having fights against this one robot over and over and over and over and over again, dragging out fights by continuously dodging taunting and limb breaking just to level up so I can progress. Like, I feel kind of bad. 70% of my time playing this game is just me beating up this one robot. I mean, look at this. But all this other stuff just turns the game into such a big grind that not even Tony Hawk or Urban Meyer would touch it. After you beat this robot for the 69th time, you can finally buy the parts you want and have competitive fights with the higher ranked robots. And once again, that is where the game shines. Each robot not only has their own stats and parts, they all fight different. This guy is very fast and darts in and out quickly, but he leaves his body open when doing so. Fighting these guys is fun until you hit another roadblock, which requires you to beat up the same robot over and over and over again. You repeat this process of fighting, losing, grinding, and then fighting and winning until you get up to Zeus, this shiny black robot who causes more visual problems for this emulation than anyone else. And you just beat him. The fight is not special, climactic, or anything. He doesn't do really any unique moves or has a second phase. You just win. And that's real steal the game. You can play exhibition fights and go online. Well, you used to anyway. And that's really it. The only thing I guess you could do is continue to grind to unlock the best parts, but that's such a tedious task, and that's coming from me, who edits YouTube videos. I guess you can go on a no upgrade run if you really want to, but I think cutting yourself with the rustiest blade you can possibly find and then sticking that cut into a vat of alcohol, lemon juice, and salt would be more preferable, honestly. Post the launch, it's hard to find how much Real Steel has sold. If you look up PSN October 2011 top 20 best selling games, Real Steel debuts at number 17. Next month, it shot up to number 7, but then got knocked back down the next month after that. It seemed that the game wasn't a big seller, and one thing that can be attributed to that is the very, very poor critical reception. As I mentioned earlier, it has a 41 Metacritic score, which is very negative. Now, I have to question if some of these reviewers even know what they're talking about. The reviewer for IGN makes a gameplay comparison to the Fight Night series. These two games have nothing in common outside of being boxing. It's like saying Tony Hawk and Skate are similar because you both skateboard. 
or Grand Theft Auto and Minecraft are the same because you both control a character. Real Steel would eventually fade into obscurity. Even when you Google Real Steel game, you get a bunch of stuff related to the mobile game as opposed to the PS3 Xbox 360 game. Real Steel's video game Twitter account is weird. 95% of it is Japanese for some reason. But even so, you find gems in English like this. Zeus is wicked fearsome. The deep thuds of his footsteps and whir of his core reminds me of when my dad used to get mad. Something you want to tell me, Real Steel Game Twitter account? Well, maybe his dad got a little too mad because on February 13, 2017, the account announced that the game would be delisted. Overall, Real Steel is a lot like Facebreaker. Both are completely forgot boxing games that take a while to beat because you go up against hard ass opponents and they both got bad reviews. Yes, the grind is annoying and yes, the ability to paint your robot as DLC is a predecessor to the predatory practices we now have today. But the gameplay is pretty fun and there's a solid base here for a good game. And the game is only 10 bucks or was 10 bucks anyway. And let's be honest here, we spent it on worse.